So I feel like when I got into med school, I knew a little bit about what I want, what kind of doctor I wanted to be like. I knew I wanted to focus on patient communication. I knew I wanted a longitudinal patient relationship. I also knew that I like fixing things, like working with my hands. Um, and so I knew I was interested in the surgical or procedural specialty. I was lucky enough um, to actually spend my first two weeks of my clinical year um, at rotating in ophthalmology at Duke. And I uh, just really enjoyed the experience, just really loved the fact that we can see all the pathology. Literally everything is right in front of your own eyes. Um, then I did an extra year of research um, in ophthalmology, and it's really at that time that like my passion for ophthalmology grew. I just think the eye is an amazing organ. We work with people's quality of life, which is just huge. Um, and we get to, again, have that longitudinal patient experience while being surgeons, which is something that's pretty unique, I think, in the world of medicine. When I applied for med medical school, I actually thought I was going to be a pediatric oncologist, and then I, I did a, a year of nephrology research, and then I thought I was about psychiatry. So I essentially liked it all, and I had a lot of difficulty deciding. And I like to share that because sometimes, you know, you don't have to go into med school thinking you're going to be, be an ophthalmologist. Sometimes it takes time to, to decide, and that's what actually happened to me. I did a year of uh, nephrology research, and midway through the year, I was like, you know, I love the kidney. I love how it works, but it's uh, not all... I, I can't see myself doing this for 10 years. And then I decided to sh shadow a glaucoma specialist. And here I am, a glaucoma specialist today. And I saw him doing lasers and I saw him talking to patients about glaucoma and like the great relationships he had with patients. And I honestly was hooked after I saw him do lasers, the relationship with patients and cataract surgery. I was like, this is it. I want to do this. And then um, that, that was like towards the end of my third year. And then I decided and, and went with it. And I, in terms of meeting expectations, I feel like it succeeded them actually. I'm very happy. Well, you know, there's plenty of room uh, for success in the field of ophthalmology. My, my co-residents, so one was a mathematics major, one was a liberal arts, and one was an engineer. Um, and they all did exceptionally well. Of course, they did it in different ways. Uh, and certainly at Mass Ioneer, um, we have seen uh, success in so many dimensions. And even if you look at our faculty as well, you, you see this incredibly diverse uh, set of pathways that people have followed. Uh, to be successful. So I think um, there is no limitation based upon personality. I think one of the, uh, ophthalmology is different in a couple of ways, but you know, if you were going through medical school and then an internship and you went into internal medicine, uh, you would continue to accrue knowledge along the way, but your basic skill sets are already in place by the time you get to your residency, right? how to examine the liver and the heart. Boy, it's not like that at all in ophthalmology. You, you enter this field, and you have an entirely new set of skills that you have to acquire, uh, many of them technical, right? <clears throat> Initially, the slit lamp and indirect ophthalmoscopy and such, but then all the surgical techniques. So <clears throat> one has to want to embrace this uh, new opportunity for learning. And it's, you know, there's a lot to it, and it takes uh, a long-term commitment and interest in doing it. Um, there are what, depends how you divide it up, nine subspecialties in ophthalmology. So it's a very esoteric field. And I think people who are curious and want to follow things down a path to understand them better tend to do very well. And Mass Ioneer, one thing that I think we have enjoyed over the years, where we as faculty feel like we have done a good job, is when the residents um, come in and they're curious and motivated and, and take advantage of all that's available. They do extremely well and we feel happy because they're doing well. So. Yeah, I don't think there's any limitation in, in, in terms of personality types, and I think uh, there's plenty of room for success.